Hey, what's up everyone? It's Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2. This video is going to be talking about strongly typed and loosely typed programming languages. And I am going to say how C kind of ties in with all of this. So C is what's known as a strongly typed language. What strongly typed means is that... Goodness, boy! <laughs> what strongly typed means is that every piece of data has a specific type. You can think of strongly as strict. So C is strict in the sense that when we declare variables, we have to say what type they are. And once we say what type they are, they're always going to be that type, the variable that is. We can take the value and we can cast that value. So for example, you could do something like this, which will change the five, which is an integer, to a double, but the actual variable x will always be an integer. To illustrate my point, let's imagine that the only data type we have are strings. So a string is a sequence of characters, such as hello. And no longer do we have data types like integers and double and all that good stuff. In this situation, we would have to represent a number like this. Now what if we said, hey, let's add five plus five. Should this be interpreted as, oh, obviously that's going to be 10, or should it be interpreted as, five, five. The combination of two strings like this right here is known as concatenation for a fun fact. You can see kind of how ridiculous this is. Like, why would we always use strings? Well, I was showing that to illustrate what it would be like if we didn't have various data types. A strongly typed language prevents confusion like this because of data types. Now the opposite of a strongly typed language is called a loosely typed language. Now a loosely typed language doesn't... Onyx boy. Boy. Hey boy. Hey. 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 Boy. Now a loosely typed language doesn't go so far as to only have one data type, kind of like everything is strings, but they're not quite as strict. So rather than having integers and floats and doubles and signed and unsigned and longs and all that stuff, it'll just have like number. So the data types are much more vague. So to illustrate the difference between a strongly typed language and a loosely typed language, let's consider an example. One divided by three. In C, this is going to equal zero. That's because these are both integers. In a loosely typed language, that's probably not gonna happen. The result will probably be 0.333 and so forth. You can see that C is much more strict in that you have to be very specific in what you want to do with your types. This has the obvious downside of weird results like this, but there are a lot of plus sides. If you know what you're doing, there is less chance for unexpected results. This concept altogether is kind of hard to grasp when you're first starting, so I have a beautiful illustration that'll show this perfectly. There is a popular programming language known as JavaScript. JavaScript is one of the most popular loosely typed languages. The way JavaScript considers types is very interesting. In fact, it has its own name that a lot of people call it. It's called duck typing. And don't worry, I'm not gonna give a tutorial series on JavaScript right now, but I'm doing this to illustrate the difference between loosely typed and strongly typed languages. This kind of stuff is important to know. So why in the world is it called duck typing? <laughs> well, the philosophy goes, if it looks like a duck, if it talks like a duck, it's a duck. <laughs> the first benefit of this is that a lot of different types can be treated the same because you can treat everything like a duck. But there's a downside in that not everything is going to qualify as a duck in whatever sense that means, whether it be it being a number or a certain type of number. Quack, quack. Wah, wah. Example A. Here is a classic duck. Surely this is a duck. Obviously. Here you can see this one resembles a duck and it looks like it talks like a duck too. So, hmm, must be a duck. And lastly, this one, obviously that's a duck. And clearly it's quacking, so must be a duck, right? I hope this example goes to show what duck typing is. In C, this problem's not gonna happen. <laughs> if something is a duck, we know it's a duck. In JavaScript, 
we can even have functions expecting a duck. So it's like, yeah, they're gonna pass in a duck. And this language is so loose, you could pass in a potato and it's not gonna care. So you have to do all these extra steps to make sure you're getting what you're expecting. When it comes to types, you can't always be sure the type is in the right form. We could have the form in a duck, the Mona Lisa, or an alien. Well, I mean, a duck and a duck, right? <laughs> In C, these would all probably be different data types, but it's not easy to convert between the three. Because of this, we need typecasting. Typecasting is used to convert between data types. This is how I feel a lot of people approach finding a mate in life. A girl will say something like, oh, he looks like a nice guy. He says nice things to me. Therefore, he's a nice guy until you figure out he's an alien come to eat your life. So when it comes to finding your love, <laughs> do not be loosely typed. Simple as that. So yeah guys, that's all I got for this video. Hopefully the illustration helped you clear this out in your brain. In the upcoming videos, we'll be talking a little bit more about data types and typecasting, and we'll be getting into more depth with that. So if you've liked this video and this series, please click like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it.